What's up YouTube? Fred here. <laughs> Alright, welcome to Fred's Full Throttle. In today's video, we're going to talk about Rivian and specifically the R1T and R1S vehicles and why you might want to pay attention to those. I'm going to talk about the five things that I think really make this company stand out uh, versus competitors like Tesla or GM or anybody else who's going to be making electric cars. And kind of where does that fit in the picture for enthusiasts? So let's get right into it. All right, so real quick, before I get into the five things that I think are really making Rivian stand out among electric car makers, uh, let me give you a quick overview of the company. So founded in 2009 by a guy named RJ Scaringe. Uh, he's 38 years old, which makes me wonder what I'm doing <laughs> making YouTube videos when he goes out and uh, founds a car company. Um, but anyway, founded in, in 2009, uh, they really were kind of flew under the radar. They originally thought they were going to make a sports car. They spent a bunch of years developing that, only to realize that others like Tesla had, had kind of beaten them to that punch. They'd started to make sports cars, and it wasn't really going to stand out from the crowd. Now, RJ being kind of an enterprising guy, uh, decided that, hey, let's do something a little bit different. Everybody's focusing on high-end luxury cars and on-road driving. Let's cater to a different clientele, a different audience. Let's cater to the people that like being outdoors, kind of the adventurous types, and let's focus on making an electric vehicle for them. So they flew under the radar for a number of years, and in 2018, they kind of blew everybody away. They went to the LA Auto Show, and they un unveiled the R1T and the R1S, which stand for truck or SUV, and those are kind of their two kind of flagship vehicles, as well as they're both the first vehicles that they're going to bring to market. All right, so real quick, a couple of like kind of headline figures for these cars. 754 horsepower and 829 uh, pound-feet of torque, uh, which are going all four wheels. They have motors at each wheel. Uh, that results in a 0-60 to 60 time of 3 seconds or less. And they have a range in their top spec models of over 400 miles, which is coming from a 180 kilowatt hour battery, uh, which is, is pretty high. That's, that's a little higher than what we've kind of seen currently uh, from other electric car makers. All right, so now that you have a general idea of what Rivian's all about, I want to talk about the five things that I think are really making Rivian not only stand out from the crowd, but something that car enthusiasts and kind of people in the car industry are really going to want to take notice of and why I think Rivian is, is really well positioned in the market um, to be successful and going to be engaging to drive. So the first of these is that Rivian is designing their vehicles with the target audience of outdoor enthusiasts. They've designed them to be functional off-road, they've got you know, all the creature comforts and technology to make it a nice place to be, but the vehicles are primarily designed for someone who's going to be outdoors, they're going to be out away from you know, cities and towns, they're going to be on dirt roads, they're going to be off-roading, and really making those vehicles designed to fit that kind of lifestyle and mindset. Um, this is the first we've seen this. Uh, other brands like Tesla or Volvo or GM, their vehicles have all been more catered towards pavement driving pretty much exclusively. Um, maybe some light packed dirt roads or something like in a Tesla Model X or Model Y, but really vehicles designed for people in and around a city. Rivian's taking the opposite approach. They're going to the other end of the spectrum. These are the people that are kayaking and hiking and mountain biking and all the outdoor stuff. And if you look at the footage from around their factory and you talk to any of the engineers, you look at their, the videos about them, you'll notice that they mentioned basically every single outdoor sport that you could conceivably do and that that is the people they want to make these vehicles for. To help facilitate that, they've got a whole bunch of extra storage. You know, you're, we're used to at this point having a frunk in the car, you're having a large trunk where you've got a low floor because of the skateboard style battery in a lot of electric cars. So you've got a good amount of storage in a normal electric car. Well, Rivian's taking that to the next level. So the front trunk in the Rivian is 11 cubic feet, which is about as big as the back of a normal SUV. So under the bed of the Rivian truck, it actually it flips up. There's a, you can use where the spare tire is for another seven cubic feet of storage. And then on the truck specifically, there's actually a tunnel behind kind of the back seats, but before the bed, down at floor level, accessible from the outside, that's another 12 cubic feet. And if you add up all the different storage between the bed, that tunnel, the trunk, you end up with 68 cubic feet of storage, which is more than just about any vehicle for kind of a mid-sized truck 
for going off-road and going camping or exploring, um, which is really quite a standout thing. They know that all the people that do this kind of stuff, they're bringing their bikes, they're camping with their tent, they have food, they've got all that you know, stuff for those hobbies. They need somewhere to put all that stuff and they need a way to bring it there. Additionally, there are gonna be a lot of accessories right from the factory that will facilitate that. So they've got rails that go along the top of the bed of the truck and you can then mount a tent on the top of it. Uh, you can do bike racks, you can do kayak racks, you have roof racks on the top of the truck so you can put additional things mounted on. You've got that tunnel, which besides like storing kayak paddles or skis or something, you can actually, you can buy from them a kind of slide out kitchen, which will have a stove, a sink, it'll have a water tank so that you can wash your dishes and actually like really provide you some functionality. So if you're camping, you pop up the tent, you slide out the kitchen, and you can have you know a meal cooked within you know a short amount of time, and it's powered off of the battery of the truck, so there's no propane, there's none of the stuff that you'd have to worry about. As long as the vehicle's in a drivable condition, so your battery is not empty, you have this usable kitchen area, um, which is pretty remarkable. We've not seen that from anybody else before, and I think that's really gonna be something that's gonna cater to the people who wanna be outdoors and make just everything easier. So the next point I wanted to cover about Rivian and why they are kind of uniquely positioned in the industry to take on others like Tesla or GM, much more established players, is that they're incredibly well funded. Um, in 2019, they announced that over the course of that year, they had $2.85 billion in funding from companies like Amazon and Ford and T. Rowe Price. And then in 2020, they successfully got another $2.5 billion to kind of build their factories, start building their electric infrastructure, and really kind of flesh out that design. Um, they're incredibly well funded, which is really good. This means that they actually stand a really good chance of delivering on all the promises that they're With Ford going in with a $500 million uh, investment, Amazon going with over, I believe over a billion dollars across a couple different rounds of funding, they actually have very sizable stakes in Rivian to be successful. And both of those companies, as well as several other investors, are there to make sure that Rivian's going to succeed. So I think that's really gonna help them out. And one of the most challenging things when you are starting out, as, as RJ in one of his interviews said, that they're gonna spend over $3 billion before they make their first dollar back, before they actually have a product in the hands of a consumer and start making a return on those investments. Anyone starting right out of the gate is going to need that money and it's really nice to see that some very large players and successful companies are backing them because they believe in the technology, they believe in the vision and they see this as a successful business model. One of the things that they're doing is they've actually they've got a deal that Amazon signed with them committing to buying 100,000 electric Amazon delivery vans. And so all those gray prime trucks you see driving around in your neighborhood, kind of no matter where you live, those are going to get replaced pretty soon with electric vehicles and under the hood if you take them apart they're actually all made by Rivian. So this is going to do a couple things that maybe didn't make it to the press release. One, it's going to give them a lot of very quick experience up front with the supply and demand of all their, the stuff they need for manufacturing. It's going to give them a lot of experience in building and fine tuning all of those assembly processes. It's going to give them a boatload of real time and over time uh, data on the driving characteristics of the vehicles, what parts wear out, what things might need a redesign, and it's gonna give them a tremendous leg up on any other startup small electric car company because they're gonna have a built-in user base that no matter if people are driving cars or not, Amazon's gonna be shipping things and using these trucks. And those vehicles are probably gonna get abused pretty hard, just in general, carrying lots of weight, moving packages, driving all the time, um, and the great part is that this is going to help benefit Rivian for the customer cars because they're going to actually have a lot of this data gathered from all the telemetry of those fleet vehicles. The other big thing about this is that they're not going to have 100,000 ready all at once. The first deliveries for these vans actually start 2021 this year as well. But one of the other benefits is that this is a sustained amount of vehicles that they need to build. So it gives them kind of somebody who's already committed to buying some things for the next couple years. 
and that's going to help them because they have a, a continued revenue stream, which I'm sure in the first, let's say, five years of a car company, that's super, super important. Having some guaranteed money from a deal like what they have with the Amazon, it's really going to help them. And it's going to take away that Im immediate like need to start showing a return on that investment because they've got a guaranteed customer. So I think that's really good. So I'm a car enthusiast and my channel is about driving on fun roads, enjoying loud and expensive and fun cars, and really enjoying the drive. Like the focus is on the enjoyment. And one of the pieces of that is performance. Rivian is gonna be no slouch here. As I mentioned with the specs, they're gonna be able to go zero to 60 in three seconds. That's very, very fast. That's faster than my Corvette, faster than any vehicle that I own. So as an enthusiast, one of the things that I like about electric vehicles, one of the things that stands out to me is that always available torque and performance. As mentioned, uh, the vehicles are going to be able to go 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. I believe that's on pavement. But even off-road, the performance is something they're very interested in and taking really seriously. Um, they've done a whole lot of hot weather testing out in the deserts. They've done a trip from South America all the way to North America, over 13,000 miles, um, to really beat the heck out of these vehicles and make sure that they live up to that adventurous kind of outdoorsy vibe, um, but doing it all in a performant manner. Something where you put your foot down, whether you're on a sand dune or on pavement, and you can drift the vehicle, you can spin the tires, and you can actually get that, you know, guttural acceleration that we all are kind of excited about for electric vehicles. Um, one of the other cool things about them is that they have air suspension so that when you go over tough terrain, you can actually raise the ride height up so that you get a little bit better ground clearance. And then the fact that they have motors on each corner, there are a couple benefits to this. One is that you have high torque at any corner of the vehicle. And so when you're driving along, you can immediately vector torque where you need to. And as soon as it detects a wheel slipping, it doesn't have to put power to that tire. Um, this is miles and light years ahead of anything that a gas engine vehicle has, just due to the nature of you have one power plant and you know, through a series of clutches and you know, connectors, you're able to get power to each wheel, but you can't control it with the level of fidelity that somebody like Rivian with electric motors is able to do. And this also departs a little bit from what Tesla is even doing. So they've got, you know, their dual motor performance vehicles where you have a motor in the front, motor in the back, and it's controlling the pairs of wheels independently. And certainly you have a lot more granular control, but where you have four, this actually allows you a couple interesting things. For example, you can do what they call a tank turn, where you can have the wheels on one side of the vehicle spin the opposite direction of the wheels on the other side of the vehicle. And this effectively gives you the ability to pivot the vehicle in place full 360 in either direction. Now there's gonna be some limits on that. You can't do it on dry pavement or high traction surfaces. So sand or dirt or ice, those are places you'd be able to. But just the fact that you can do that and the footage of it's incredible, I'll show you here. Um, that's something that's gonna be pretty neat and especially helpful for if you're off road and you get to the, a dead end and you can't have a lot of space to turn around, you actually can pivot on axis, just like a snowcat, or in their case, an army tank, which is where that reference came from. Additionally, since everything is sealed, the vehicle actually can drive through three feet of water, um, which you'd think an electric vehicle going in water, but because the drivetrain is sealed, there's very few moving parts, this actually allows the vehicle, using that air suspension to raise up and drive into up to three feet of water, which I don't know, that's probably gotta be like halfway up the door, um, which is pretty impressive for an off-road vehicle in general. All right, so on to the fourth thing that I think really makes Rivian stand out. And this may not be quite as flashy as you know some of the performance stuff, but this is their commitment to being ecologically conscious and sustainability. Now, before you click away, listen for a second, because this is pretty interesting. So everyone knows that the ocean's full of plastic, and there's this big garbage patch, they call it, off in the Pacific somewhere, you know, 100 miles across or something, and in millions of tons of plastic. So 
Rivian said, hey, what can we do to be a little bit more sustainable? Hundreds of thousands of tons of plastic are used to package everything, carry it securely so you don't get parts that are scratched or damaged when they arrive. So Rivian said, hey, wait a minute. There's an abundance of plastic offshore. Why not take that plastic from the garbage patch, melt that all together and recycle it and actually build the shipping containers and pallets and other equipment that we need. So they actually are taking trash from the ocean, molding it into these shipping containers and pallets, using it for these cars, using it over and over so that once they take all the parts out, they actually ship it back to wherever the parts are manufactured reloaded and sent back. Now you may be wondering, well, okay, once those wear out, now what do they do? Well, they've actually got that covered too. They ship them back to the facility that made them. They're re-recycled again and turned back into more pallets and containers and things that they need. So hang on, I know that that's not particularly exciting, but on top of that, they've actually signed the climate pledge that Amazon and a couple other very large companies are signing on to, which says that they are committed to a net zero carbon footprint by the year 2040, which is actually 10 years earlier than the Paris Accord. They have signed on saying we're going to look for every way that we can possibly make our com company greener and we can reuse reusable resources and we can prevent or end carbon production in the course of our whole uh, process. You know, I think that's pretty awesome. One other part that I just thought was kind of cool and I figured I'd throw in here is that the batteries in the R1T and the R1S are designed from day one before the vehicle is even assembled to be a double use battery. It's used for whatever the usable lifespan is for in the cars themselves, but then they're designed to be part of microgrid storage for towns and cities in kind of underserved areas. Um, such as Puerto Rico is going to be their first example, places where they could really use some, some backup batteries during storms or something to hold solar energy that they build. We're really excited about the ability to take batteries, put them initially into a vehicle, but then plan for and design for those batteries at their end of vehicle life to connect them to a second life in various types of grid storage. To do that, you have to design the battery from the very beginning, such that the transition from a car to the grid is really easy. We are all aware that we have to start taking care of our planet and doing whatever we can. This has been the puzzle we as a company are trying to solve and different people are working on different parts. But one of the biggest things that they have that they haven't really highlighted too much, it's been in a few press releases, but there's not a ton of buzz about it yet, is that they address one of the things that people are most worried about if you ask someone, hey, would you trade in your gas-powered car for an electric car? What's that, you might ask? Well, that is range anxiety. So the idea of range anxiety is really that in a gas car, you drive to wherever you're going, hey, I wanna go on a trip that's 200 miles. You get partway along, hey, my gas is a little low, I'm gonna go pull up to the next gas station I see. So you have that built-in mindset of there is a gas station that at some point soon I'll fill up, no worries. Well, in an electric car, you can't really do that. So it's the fear of getting somewhere, but then not being able to charge up to come back or getting part way to something and then not being able to. So obviously with the large batteries of like a 400 plus mile range, that's pretty good. That helps, you know, most people aren't going on a long off-road excursion that's more than 400 miles, which that'll address most of the need. But what about those people that do? What do you do then? So this is where, where it's just pretty fascinating that they thought of this. Rivian has a patent for two different type of supplemental batteries you can get added to your vehicle so you can boost that range. So out of the factory, if you buy the top trim vehicle, you're gonna get that 400, 410 mile range. But you can spec as an option, and it's not available now, but I'm assuming sometime soon, you can spec an option for either a vertical battery in the bed of the truck, so sort of like those toolboxes you see behind the cab, or a flat battery that actually lays on the bed of the truck, a couple inches thick, you know, four or five inches thick, and it connects up to the cooling of the vehicle and it connects up to the power grid on the vehicle itself, and it can add significant range to the vehicle, all while just being kind of looking like it's built right into the vehicle. Now these aren't like a quick change thing. These aren't something where, you know, you just carry a gas can and you put that in, you know, that size. These are gonna be very heavy, very solid things. Um, you'd probably need some sort of a hoist or a lift, but it might be something that when you show up at an off-road park or you show up and you know you're gonna go on a trip somewhere where you need a little more range, 
you may be able to go to a Rivian dealer and either rent one or buy one, have them install it, go on your trip, come back, and take it back out when you don't need it. They haven't really explained how the mechanics of that work or what the costs involved are, but it actually has hoses that will connect up to the cooling of the vehicle to keep the batteries at the optimal temperature. And I would imagine, just based on the, the patent drawings and the sizes that they're showing, this is going to add a significant amount of range. 30% more, 40% more, maybe more than that for the vehicle. And so that 400 miles might become 600, might become 700, and really take that range anxiety completely out of the picture. But then, just as interesting, but another idea is that they've also, they're building the vehicles to be able to charge other electric vehicles at the same time. You go out and you're in your Rivian, and maybe you've got that extended battery, or maybe you just have a full charge, and you come upon another electric vehicle. Now, they haven't specified, or at least I don't know that they've specified, if it's just other Rivian vehicles, or if it can be a Tesla or something else. But you pull up on this other vehicle. Let's, let's assume it's only Rivians, and there's somebody else who they're coming back, and they're a little bit low on battery. You can stop your vehicle, take out a special cord, plug the two vehicles together, and actually charge the other vehicle from your own so that they're able to get, I don't know, 20 miles, 50 miles more range to get to a charging station. So a, any Rivian vehicle can act like a rescue boat for another Rivian vehicle, and who knows, maybe Tesla or somebody else also. So I thought that was pretty cool, and I thought that it really caters to that off-road group, the people who are gonna take these on, on trails and go way out in the wilderness, is the ability to help both yourself but also help others. That's a pretty fundamental to the outdoorsy mindset. People who go off-roading, people who are hiking, they're some of the nicest people you'll meet and those are people that if they come upon someone who needs help, they wanna be able to do that. And the fact that they're building that into the design of the vehicle really speaks to the fact of how deeply they thought about the people who are gonna be using these vehicles. I'm really excited personally to see them, hopefully test drive, and maybe at some point buy one. Um, I've been holding off on replacing my Tacoma, and I'm gonna drive that thing till it literally stops working, hoping that electric vehicles will be at the point where I can buy an electric pickup truck to replace it because that I think will meet all the needs that I have and be a better way to, to move going forward. Though for now, I'm still gonna have gas vehicles for the performance and enthusiast stuff. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please throw a like my way. Until next time, Fred out.